en jungfer red ved juletid. Ting, tang, ting, du til dig. Og bring ham da ved sneen hvid. Ting, tang, ting, du til dig. Welcome to the topic of the episode show, as we call it Totes. Totes. The weekly episode topic show that we give you a topic to talk about, and then we talk about what you told us about the topic. You try to do the same joke every week. It's it's slightly... I'm, I'm going to introduce next week. So this week... <laughs> That's different. It, it is. That was different. <laughs> slightly. Okay, so uh, our topic for this week mm-hmm. is going to be free-to-play games, free-to-play model, yeah. and, and what, what makes it good. Um, and then next week we're going to talk about family games. So if you have an opinion about those, you can either put that in the comments or reach out to us on Twitter mm-hmm. or Facebook. Facebook or YouTube or Gmail or... Wherever, yeah. Prefer, pre- I, if you if you can find Twitch with our little weird mustache guy, <laughs> wherever, that's wherever. us. I'd say I'd say Twitter's probably the easiest way to, to grab these. But uh, but even better if you like us on Facebook, then you can put it on the whole comment string, string, and you can have a discussion with everybody, including us and other people that follow us. With more than 140 characters, more, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So uh, we we have a friend uh, named Nate. And he he is very much into the free to play game. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, summarize his opinion on this, and then we'll we'll talk about mm-hmm. it from there. Um, so he says that yes, it's a totally viable gaming prospect concept. Most of the time, it's done horribly bad. Uh, Guild Wars one and two was good, and Fliff, F L Y F F. I guess that's Fliff. And uh, ESO is pretty well, but um, it, he need, he says that the important element is that it can't be pay to win. Oh, and, I agree. And yeah, well, and Guild, but Guild Wars two, the, those that's not that's not free to play. You have to buy Guild Wars. Okay. So you have to buy um, Elder Scrolls. Or Elder Scrolls moved to free to play. Okay, I'll right. do that. Yeah. And then uh, DCUO has has some pretty intense restrictions until until you uh, until you buy into it. Mm-hmm. I think DCUO is is actually a little bit different. I feel like that's more of a demo slash trial mode than a free-to-play game that also has this other yeah. thing. Because it's... World of Warcraft does the same thing. World, you World of Warcraft, level 20, EverQuest, free. Yeah. like a, a, a lot of the a lot of the old games transition to that new model. I think I think that's a that's a separate thing from uh, from the actual free-to-play model. Yeah. So how would you define free-to-play? So a free-to-play a free-to-play game, a really a true free-to-play game is a game that costs nothing to per- to buy at the start. Okay. You can play the entire game without buying anything. Okay. But if you but has microtransactions. Okay. To, to then to then unlock. Allows, to, okay. to, to unlock uh, if it's an MMO, to unlock bank space like uh, the Old Republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have very limited bank space unless you buy uh, bank space. Right. You or uh, let's say you want to buy different skins, you want to buy different mounts, whatever it is. As long as it's not game breaking, that's a yeah. different story. But uh, that's a free to play freemium. I would consider where it's like you have uh, a free to play game. And then you have some type of subscription that will then help. Right. Uh, in that, it, the Old Republic is a good example of that as well. Okay. Is the Old Republic you can play for free, or mm-hmm. you can pay ten dollars a month, and for ten dollars a month you don't have to do any microtransactions. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. And so um, a, a lot of this stuff, uh, Clash of Clans mm-hmm. on on mobile slash tablet was one of the ones that. that that's that's what I think of when I think of free to play, and and for the most part, the these are the bad ones that Nate was talking about because um, Guild Wars is good. <laughs> the, there's Guild, okay, okay, uh, but yeah, Clash of Clans. Yeah, the the entire game system is built around do a thing and then wait. Yep. Do a thing and then wait. Yep. Uh, Candy, Candy Crush. Crush. Candy yep. Crush is, same is yeah the same thing. Where where like the ga- the game is there, but a lot of the actual gameplay, and I'm going to put that in quotes because just tapping things, it's like Farmville. Yeah. Yeah. Farmville. Far- Farmville yeah. on, on See, Facebook stuff like that, where where stuff is recharging. Um, that's the other one because uh, yes, pay to win is a problem. Mm-hmm. Like when you're when you're playing with other people, and yeah. you, if you can if you can throw five dollars at something, and then you have the superior weapon or superior armor or units or whatever whatever the gameplay element is. Yes, that's a problem. Um, the other problem is that if your gameplay mechanics mm-hmm. are time based. Yeah. Can- Candy Crush. I'll be honest. I haven't actually played. Um, I have, <laughs> but but like that's yeah. that's a thing where like you can play so many times mm-hmm. and and then it it, it has to recharge or yeah, something every, before like, you can play day, again. like a day or two 
uh, to wait. And that's like that's like if you sat and played Candy Crush like like say twenty or thirty tries or something. I can't remember exactly how many. It okay, was. but but, like, but I had to sit and actively play it for a considerable amount of time, and then it was like, oh, you got to wait. Okay, but the. The waiting wasn't the mechanic. There was actually like a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Thing. Yeah. The puzzle thing is is what is what you're actually playing. Yeah, it's a match. It's a match three with some right. bonuses. Whereas Clash of Clans, um, there was the the combat bit, mm-hmm. and that that part is actual gameplay, yeah. um, sort of. Because but Farmville has because all no... you're doing all you're doing is is tapping the the things and yeah, putting but, it in. But Farmville, there the gameplay is, um, reaping the crops. Reaping, tapping, creating new, creating new areas, which there's some strategy in, but you're basically tapping to collect because it can't hold for a certain amount of time. So that gives yeah. the the from gameplay mechanic that gives you a reason to have to log back in, mm-hmm. and you have the social aspect of you being able to send stuff to people, being able to slash harassment, slash harassment. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So let's let's talk about the difference between that yeah. and Sim Farm, which is a game that I enjoyed. Okay. Okay. So in in Sim Farm, mm-hmm. you you have uh, your your primary restriction is your resources, yeah. your your money. You need to be able to make enough money mm-hmm. off of this to plant the next crop, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that's that is at first glance very similar to Farmville. But the thing is that um, like you set up you set it up and you you got to choose which crops it were. Mm-hmm. Which crops you were planting, and then you you slowly expand your your uh, your farm, um, but you're you're trying to it's it's more about resource management, and my time is yeah. not one of those resource. Well, it actually is. It is a pretty substantial. It's your, resource. it's your resource, but not a game resource. But yeah. it's it's not a restricted in-game resource, yeah. and that's that's the difference because. Um, when you bought when you bought Sim Farm mm-hmm. or downloaded it because shareware was a thing, yep. Um, and and God bless Maxis for that because like after after a certain amount of time, like they would they would release their game, mm-hmm. a bunch of people would buy it, yep. and then they would put it out as shareware. And I don't even remember any restrictions on it, I don't, or maybe I pirated I it. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't pirate stuff anymore. But yeah, so uh, one of the games that the the best free to play game that I remember is a game on Android called Sector Strike. Okay. And it's a it's a shooter in the style of Gradius or R type or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, so and the the best part about it is where your finger was was not necessarily where the ship was. Okay. So like you could you could have the okay, if if this is the screen mm-hmm. and my ship's right here, I put my finger down here in the corner and I can move the ship while still being able to see my ship. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest problem with with how those go. Um, but the thing is that uh, you you could slowly, as you went through the stages, uh, there were two different types of currency, which was concerning to me initially, because usually when there's something like that, there's some type of special currency that you can only get by paying money. Um, and so you you put that in, and like as you go through, as you kill monsters or other ships, then they they drop resources. You use those to upgrade your ship and everything. Yeah. And there's there's a hundred levels, and then it resets, and you play another hundred levels, and it's constantly getting tougher and everything. Um, I fully upgraded my ship at mm-hmm. level like one seventy something. I've been playing this thing probably eight to ten hours. Okay, and. I, I had never felt that I needed to buy anything. Yeah. So I played that for 8 to 10 hours, and before I uninstalled the game, I bought some of the in-game resources and, and sent it to him. And was like, thank you for making an ethical free-to-play game. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, if the if the uh, the stuff is only cosmetic, we're about that. Yeah. Like yeah. If, if, you, if you have built a quality game that is worth that is worth playing, that is fun, and the only thing that you buy is cosmetic, yeah. you have to make a good game mm-hmm. in order for that free-to-play system to work. Yeah. So if, if there's a game and the only thing you can buy is cosmetics, that's probably a decent game. I'm okay with microtransactions that um, the way um, Guild Wars does it to uh, a pretty decent job of it where it has in-game transactions that aren't game breaking, okay. um, because it's specifically, like I said, little boost bank space or 
you'll have some random you know random things you could you could unlock some maybe some micro pet things and yeah. uh, so there's that that I consider cosmetic but um, in uh, the old Republic and Guild Wars and others to say uh, I want to spend um, two dollars and I'm not unlocking anything that'll break the game but I'm giving myself a little more flexibility when it comes to inventory when it comes to um, like bank inventory I'm okay with those because that doesn't impede um, it doesn't change your gameplay. If you like, I'm talking yeah. like increase your character game, character backpack or your or bank because that helps you play a little longer. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't. If you're playing PvP or anything, it doesn't break that. Well, and it also it, it's focused on removing some of the tedium sure. of the game. And like, the, there's not an excessive amount of tedium mm -hmm. in the game. Yeah. And so you can you can play without it. Mm -hmm. And so. Basically, what we're getting around to is that free to play is a model that can work, but like Nate said, most of the time, most of the time, that's not what they're working yeah. for. Their their objective is to find the whales, which whales are the people who just pour money into a free to play game, yeah. and and that's that's kind of ridiculous. And and by free to play, we are we have been talking about. I just want to make sure we clarify this. These aren't games like Final Fantasy uh, fourteen. Final Fantasy fourteen is a free game with a subscription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's 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 a different thing. That's, yeah, but um, if you can download it on your PC or your console and just play it, that that's what we're referring to. I think mobile, um, and I, I don't mean to like harp on a lot of what uh, Colin Moriarty said about this. With uh, he did an editorial about it, but the mobile market really is what um, tainted regular um, regular game consoles and the game market itself. Yeah, um, because people got used to. Completely free games or microtransactions. Well, the the phrase he used was "race to the bottom." Yeah, and and yeah, that's yep. that is it. That is a toxic environment, and it encourages developers mm -hmm. to make things that are not actually fun. Mm -hmm. They're just time consuming, and because it's pretty, people think <laughs> it's fun. But if, yeah. if the the gameplay mechanic, you need to have a good core game. And a lot of free-to-play games just yeah. don't. Exactly, exactly. And um, this, I think that a lot of developers want to go this model because it does make a lot of money if you hit if you hit the right um, the if you like you said you get to hit the whales you get at the right niche and everything. And there are yeah. a lot of companies that try to do this. Uh, I think that uh, it can be done ethically. It can be done very well. Um, but a lot of but people it don't. usually isn't. Usually yeah. isn't. Yeah. So uh, tell us in the comments what your favorite free to play games are and uh, which what your opinion is. Yeah. So. What game are you playing right now that's free to play? If you exactly the game that's free. Tell to us play. about the thing that you we told you to talk about so that we could talk about, and now we're asking you to talk about again. So good. See you later.